it's easy to be confused by the two and three of wands because there's a lot of similarities between these two cards. So let's start to unpick the difference. Let's look at the body language first of all. The two of wands is standing. Yes, he's looking out over that beautiful view, but he's also kind of looking over his shoulder as well, as if he's a bit anxious, but who, who else may be there or maybe anxious about, you know, someone sneaking up on him. So to me, the two of wands has... And a feeling of tenseness in his body. What I suggest you do is um, get a large flower pot or something quite heavy. See how he's holding that globe there. It's potential, but the stress there. Go to the window, kind of lean on the window ledge, hold something heavy in your hand like that. Try and look out of your window, but also at the door behind you at the same time and feel how tense your body gets in that position. It's a really useful exercise. Compare that to the Three of Wands, and he stood there, he's on a, the top of this, this hill, and he's standing just looking out at the future, looking out at that beautiful, this is uh, either an estuary or a, a, a sea or a river, it's hard to tell, but these are boats, and this is land in the distance. He is standing there, fully confident, fully relaxed and the way he's sort of hot, just leaning a little bit on that staff I think he could stand there for a long time whereas the two of ones has this anxiety so that's the first sort of difference between the two of them the ease and confidence in the three of ones the confidence with tension in the two of ones Another really useful um, technique is to look at the wands or look at whatever suit, you know, cups, swords, pentacles, look at how the suit is represented. Now, the wands, wands need to be grounded. They need to be on the earth or heading to the earth, as perhaps in the eight of wands, to really realize their full potential. And in the three of wands, all three of the wands are beautifully grounded. Whereas in the two of wands, one is rested high here on this um, the wall, and the other one, it's a small detail, but it's a beautiful detail, it is bolted to the wall. Now, I see the ones as representing energy, enthusiasm, intuition, all of those beautiful things. And there's a feeling here that the three of wands is totally confident with his energy and his intuition. I've got this. It's okay. Not a cockiness, but just a, a trust in, do you know what I trust in myself? A trust that I've got this. Whereas in the two of ones, it's like he's holding on to his, ten, his, his intuition, his energy. I hope I've got this. And it's that tension again. And I would say that that's the biggest difference between these two cards. The three of ones is confidence. I think of it like a lighthouse. I'm okay with that. I've got it. Whereas the two of ones is a hope I can do this. Still the potential, still the confidence, but the tension in there. One of my favorite details, actually one of my favorite details in the entire deck is this image here. So we've got white lilies and red roses painted onto the parapet. Now, if you go through your Rider right Waite de deck, the white lilies and the red roses are there throughout the cards. We've got them in the Magician. We've got them in the Ace of Pentacles. They're a really consistent symbol. And the red roses represent the physical body, getting on with the job, doing something. And the white lilies represent intuition, high guidance, spirituality, whatever you want to call that. And the two together is a really powerful symbol. But here they are painted onto the wall, unlike the magician where we've got real white lilies and red roses. This feels to me like a blueprint. The two of wands always feels to me like I know what I want to do. And I know how I'm going to do it. I'm just a bit anxious about committing to it right now. I'd like some guarantees that it's all going to work. It's got that sort of energy. Um, because, yes, we've got all the potential here. Always look at the landscape. We've got all this beautiful potential with the water and the blue mountains. And we've got houses and trees. So much potential. But he's behind the wall looking out. Whereas with the Three of Wands, he's climbed to this sort of, you know, this viewpoint here and he's engaged 
with his viewpoint. There is no wall blocking him. There is no window he's looking through. He is fully empowered and engaged. So if I was going to look at the difference between these two cards, I would say the two of wands is definitely about good potential. Um, and, and let's put it into a real life example. So when I first started teaching tarot, which I realized was nine years ago now, professionally, I taught various points before that, but I, I really started this gig nine years ago. When I first put my adverts out, and I had my first workshop all written up. I had the notes and I was putting the adverts out. I was in the two of ones. I'm really excited about this. I really know I want to do this. But God, I wonder if anyone will answer my adverts. I wonder if anyone will actually, you know, contact me about this. And by the end of the first workshop, I was in the three of ones. I was like, I feel confident. I've got this. I'm not cocky. Not overconfident, but just glowing in confidence in myself. And that, to me, is the difference between these two cards. <laughs>